Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today I'm going to work on a reel that uh, one of my customers brought to me. They tell me it was his dad's reel and he'd like to have it reconditioned and refurbished and see what I could do with it. And uh, it's in pretty rough shape. It's been sitting around a long time. Very sluggish on the turn. The, the line itself tells the story of age. It's all yellowed out and, uh, and crumbled with memory. And I thought it would be appropriate to do this one right now because there's a viewer out there who's uh, asked me a little bit about the setup for the, uh, the internal gearing. They're having trouble with the free spool release. So I thought uh, two at one would be a good idea. So we'll uh, take this part real apart. We're going to clean it up. We're going to do the mechanical servicing on it and we'll show you a step-by-step -step approach to uh, getting this reel fishing again or at least if it is a shelf sitter because it's his father's reel well then at least they'll have a view of what the reel looks like in a nice clean and, and service condition so i'm going to start by taking off the exterior parts while i do i'm going to ask you to subscribe to my channel if you like these kinds of videos and if you do please hit the notification button that way you're going to be able to see all of the videos I post. I post on all kinds of reels. We're working on a conventional uh, light duty or medium duty reel today for salt water or lake. But uh, we can certainly uh, do spinning reels, bait casting reels, trolling reels, heavy duty salt water reels and the like. And if you don't want to miss an episode, that notification is the best way to do that. We've removed the handle nut. You notice I used a a uh, different part. I use the part from another Ocean City handle, but if you don't have that, a regular uh, open open end or box wrench will work. You're also going to notice that there's hardly any drag washer left. You can tell that by looking at where the sleeve is relative to the, the bezel on the housing. If that sleeve is down that far without the adjuster, when it presses down, you will have no drag washer and you'll have poor performance because the star adjuster will be rubbing against this sleeve. So a quick way to tell if you have drag washers to look for the spacing on that sleeve. If it's not there or if it's in this position, you know you're gonna have to replace them. This reel by Ocean City was last made in the 1950s. That explains why it's his dad's reel. And uh, the uh, parts are no longer available, but in this case, there are drag washers for pen reels that will fit this, uh, this model. So even though Penn and o Ocean City were competitors, the uh, drag washers will fit interchangeably and uh, that's what we'll do in terms of getting this replaced. So we're gonna do this right now. We'll take the pieces and parts off. You'll notice as I take them off that I'm putting them in aside. I'm putting them into a parts tray. My parts tray is the bottom of a fast food container today. Sometimes it's the bottom of a milk jug and uh, other uh, types of holders. I don't use an elaborate uh, system for uh, assembly, disassembly. I kind of all put them in one place. That's because I know how these reels come together and uh, are taken apart. If you don't, take pictures along the way. And of course, I'm taking pictures with this video, but take pictures along the way. Stop at critical junctions and uh, take a picture so that you get the orientation of the pieces and parts correctly. And that uh, when you go to reassemble, it won't be a problem. So for example, this is a good place to take a picture. Well, you can see this hasn't been serviced in a long time. We've got a lot of dirt and and the like here, we kind of saw evidence of that. I'm going to put this into an ultrasonic cleaner. Uh, this might be why Dad put it aside to begin with. He's got some broken line in here. Kind of got wrapped around the axle, so we'll take care of that. We're going to take all that line off. And uh, then take a picture of this. This is the assembly for the uh, gearing. And you can see a little bit of a difference in terms of an approach versus a pen reel. We have a, uh, a yoke here. It has a carrier and then a gear inside that carrier. It does have the yoke springs. The uh, main bridge is only held on by two screws and uh, the yoke is held on by a little clip here. So I'm gonna uh, take that apart and then we're gonna clean all of this. We'll stop the video. I'm gonna put this in the ultrasonic cleaner which is gonna take probably 15, 20 minutes or so. Uh, but you don't need to stick, stick around for that. We'll come back when it's all cleaned up. We'll talk a little bit about some of the products and maybe we use to clean it up and uh, then we'll return. So to get the yoke off you want to take that hold down clip 
and then it should just pull up like that. That's that's your yoke assembly now. That's going to go into the parts tray. This is uh, this reel has got a spring on it that will never break. There's a lot of reels out there that have an eccentric spring that break. This one never will. Look at the gauge on that uh, that spring metal there. It's just crazy. Also notice there's not a hole in this eccentric like there would be on a pen reel. Rather this spring works by um, having uneven um, surfaces underneath here where this is riding. There's actually a flat spot as opposed to a round spot. And when you pull and push, you can see how it pushes it down and pulls it back up. To the fellow that uh, was working on the, the other one, uh, you have a riding gear in here that goes in the yoke. Let's go pull that yoke off. There's a riding gear and assembly. That's the way that it goes. The pinion gear comes out, goes in this little carrier. The yoke goes over it. Now, like unlike many of the pen yokes, you're going to notice that there's a flat spot or an angular spot on the top of this yoke. That faces outward. Don't put it inward. It uh, facilitates that uh, the yoke uh, being moved down by the jack. All right, those are the pieces and parts that are going to go in here. And I'm going to remove the bridge as well. Like I said, you don't have to uh, worry too much about the two screws up top. It's got a stuck spring for whatever reason on it. We'll get that off. So don't take these two out. You can leave those on. Those are just the guide posts. We're going to get that other spring out. But the two bottom ones you do need to remove in order to take the bridge out. So let's go do that now. I'm just using a flat bladed electrician screwdriver and good time while I'm doing this to suggest to you if you have a, a reel that you're working on and you're stuck like that uh, the fellow that uh, sent me that note leave it in the comments section and if I can help you I, I certainly will try to do that as best I can this is your bridge it doesn't have much in terms of uh, uh, a drag washer in there it's not a high max drag again but uh, these are shot and we'll get a replacement. Notice when we came out, you have a anti-reverse spring and you have a little uh, uh, stud and rounded edge to that. That's not one piece and be careful as you work on it because if you don't, uh, don't pay attention, the spring is gonna come loose. That little uh, tip end of it is gonna go somewhere and uh, then you're gonna either spend some time looking for it or you're going to have to uh, get a replacement or worse find yourself in a situation where the uh, the reel is junk because you couldn't do anything with it I've just removed the other one of these and now I with the moving parts out of the way I'm comfortable putting this into a uh, ultrasonic cleaner I'm gonna remove all the line on this spool and do the same including this uh, piece of line that's stuck here this one has no moving parts in it to speak of, so that'll go in the, spe in the uh, cleaner. I'm going to remove the bulb bearing its adjuster here. I'm going to soak this one with penetrating oil before I put, it, uh, put the rest of it into the cleaner. And uh, we'll come back when uh, the cleaner has done its job. And we'll, uh, we'll pick up where, uh, where we left off. Okay, my pieces and parts came back from the ultrasonic cleaner and I did spend a little bit more in terms of elbow grease. There were some rough spots. This cannot be corrected. This is worn out coating. Uh, most of the time, interestingly enough, if you find these reels with these aluminum spools, you find that there's holes and other uh, just total uh, rot. But in this case, this one's pretty good. I was able to remove the uh, trap line behind that little piece and clean up everything. The ultrasonic cleaner did a nice job. I don't go aggressive with cleaners in the ultrasonic. What I do use simply is um, dish detergent. So it's a, a mild uh, degreaser. And uh, if you want um, to go more aggressive, just be careful. But these bright spools just cleaned up beautifully. You can see the inscription Ocean City Philadelphia uh, here uh, and um, I used a rod and reel cleaner for the back side of this so you do get a little bit of soap um, film and residue left over uh, when you do use that so you don't think it's just put it in and take it out and you're, 
to get results like this, you do have to work a little bit on it. Okay, I'm going to just put that off to the side for a moment. We're going to go rebuild that bridge now. As I mentioned, there was very little or no existing drag in there. So we're going to take that main gear off. It comes off like that. And then we're going to pull the gear sleeve. There's a pin that holds that on. And you poke the pin through with a, uh, a little piece of uh, an awl or something, uh, whatever uh, you, you may have that's thin enough to go in. Uh, I've used everything from finishing nails to, uh, to quote unquote real tools. And here's why you want to do that, because if you look underneath there, remember this reel started out sluggish, and if you look underneath here, we've got a, a build up here of all kinds of dried greases and the like. This, uh, this is your dog, that can come off, and we saw the spring mechanism that's going to trip that. We use a little penetrating oil just to loosen this up. Go ahead and use a cotton swab to uh, get the old greases off. And a uh, good point uh, in the presentation here to tell you, if you have a question on this reel or any reel in particular, as I mentioned, this is kind of being done twofold. One is to help a customer of mine uh, restore his dad's reel, but also to answer a uh, viewers question on the orientation of the uh, uh, the gears. I'm going to take this dog off. We're just going to make sure the back side of that is clean, which it is, and get that little bit of accumulation underneath. No sense short stopping anything here. You might as well go ahead and take the time to clean it. It's only a minute or two or three more, and it's going to last a whole lot longer, uh, and it's not going to be uh, problematic for you if you just take that time. If you weren't paying attention as to how the orientation of that dog goes, well, that would have been a good place to take a picture. Uh, I've remembered that the clip goes up, but uh, not everybody's got a memory, myself included, that's going to tell you where every piece and part goes all the time, particularly on reels you're not familiar with. So stop and take the picture. You'll be happy you did later on when, uh, when you go to, to kind of take a, uh, a reinstall approach. Okay, I've taken the old grease off the shaft. I've cleaned the inner side of that because I've used the um, cotton swab to poke inside there after I did a little bit of uh, penetrating oil inside. Now we can reinstall. Just simply slide the sleeve over, get the anti-reverse dog out of the way. Remember that's going to be held in by the uh, spring push down on that pin to get that out of the way so that you can put your main gear on. Make sure that that little hole or that pin doesn't protrude outside the hole. Okay, this is the main gear. We noticed that it doesn't have much of a, a drag washer left in this stack, so let's try and get that out. If you can't get it out from the one side, turn it over. This one's been pressed down to the point where it's certainly not working. And it will need to be replaced. This is an old leather washer. It's just uh, it's being stubborn. So what happens here is the glue gets under there, or, or the, the old grease gets under there, not glue, but the old grease gets under there, dries, and then the leather just adheres to the bottom of the drag stack. And then you just got to kind of pry it all out. Eventually you will get the piece out and then you're going to notice that this is what happened with that washer, right? It, uh, the grease dried, got a steel gear, and kind of lined it up. So I'm going to use a piece of steel wool here just to clean the inside and give it that slip again. And as I mentioned, this is this reel was last made in the 1950s. You know that because it says Ocean City on it. Ocean City was acquired by True Temper in the, the late 50s, I think 57, possibly 58. And uh, they, they made reels after that with the Ocean City True Temper branding. Then they went to the True Temper brand and then they went away. So we mentioned that uh, some of the pen drag washers fit. I'm going to take a washer from the, the Pen 60 and see if that'll fit. Well, that's a very close fit, and that's going to work. There you go. You can see how it just will embed itself straight up 
in that. It's just a Long Beach 6065 drag washer. We're going to go get some drag grease on here now. Drag grease on this uh, well help it to slip a little bit, but more importantly, it, it helps it maintain its flexibility. I dip it into the grease. I wipe it in so you can see that the cavities are starting to fill, and then I just wipe off the excess. And we'll just put that into the the seating. Now, sometimes you're going to find that uh, you won't have an exact fit like this. And sometimes it's going to be a little tight. You don't want tight. You want that to be able to move. So if this one uh, is too tight, step down. This is the one from the Pen 155. You can see it's smaller in diameter, but it still will be functional. Step down if you if you don't have that. Or the other option is to take a scissors and to uh, to trim the outside, or use some uh, some other method to, to bring it down a little bit. This is going to be fine. All right, I'm going to put that on. We're going to get our grease. This reel is going to run fine for another 50, 60, 70 years. What is it, 57? So that's what, 60, 65 years? Nice. All right, I'm going to get the grease in there because we know that hasn't been greased in a while. Straight back up with the metal in. I want to buff this. It's got some dried greases on there. Let's get the, the dried greases off. Grease will be a contaminant if it dries up, so it's going to kind of be counter-purposed. And then we have a little tension washer cap. That goes next. Same thing. We know that, that cleans up after all these years. The materials in there uh, were good materials like we mentioned on the, the chroming on the outside trim ring there. I would dare you to find a reel today that uh, that has that kind of a finish. All right, the cap goes on, and then we can put this uh, cap washer on as well, or a cap sleeve rather. That's your drag stack. All right, let's go install then. We're going to remember to take our bridge plate now. You did not need to remove these two pillars. They're going to hold the springs for the yoke assembly. Now, if you did remove them, there is a trick here you just want to be aware of, and that's that there is a slot that goes halfway through the uh, that pillar. You can see it there. Those need to face straight in. That's going to accommodate this jack and act as a retention point for the jack. So if you took them off and you're having trouble getting the jack through, it's because those slots on the pillars are not properly aligned. You're going to need to go back and reset that. Your anti-reverse spring, nestle it into the cavity, and then just pull back so that this rests inside the slot. Not easy to do, but you will get it where it nests like that. So it should be nested inside that outer ridge. Be careful, it's a spring, it will shoot. But you need to do that in order to mount the the bridge properly uh, without any kind of complications. Grab your bridge assembly with those two anchor uh, shields there and assemble that. Bring that right in. Push the two into the hole and now you're properly lined. But hold that bridge because if you don't, then that anti-reverse spring is going to uh, pop out again. All right, tighten those two down. Make sure that they're nice and tight. And then we can go back up top, put the rest of this uh, reel together. Finish, make sure they're all tight. Even the top ones, which we didn't do. Now let's come over and install the yoke assembly and the carrier. So the two springs go on the yokes, posts. Remember what we said about the yoke, that indentation side is the outside, facing outwards. I'm going to grab that and get the grease on that. Next up is the carrier assembly. You have two pieces here. You have the pinion gear and you have the carrier. So get grease onto the teeth of the pinion gear. That slides inside. 
and then get grease into the track of the assembly. So you can see, we'll do it here, you can see that there's two tags 180 degrees apart, slots. That's how it's going to fit onto your spool and uh, go in and out for your operation. So you want to make sure that you get grease onto the axle of the spool shaft. That way the inner side of the pinion gear will also be greased. All right, I'm going to put the yoke into the slot, both over the, the posts. And here you just need to make sure that you clear the spring from those channels because Sometimes that spring loop will get caught in those channels we were talking about before, and if that's the case, uh, you're going to damage the operation. So just clear them both, put your jack in, make sure that the tag for the eccentric is up, keeping pressure on the yoke. Move that over until you're centered, and then you should be able to just bring that hold down clip, clip in. You can release the pressure on the pinion gear, tighten up the screw to hold that down. So just give that a spin, should turn nice and easily, which it does. We're ready to move on then. So we have our cleaned up side plate. We want to get a little bit of grease into the holder there. I removed this before. We have to put the spring back into this adjuster. That's one of the benefits of a parts tray. You can actually see that you missed it. It was quick to put that back on when it came out of the, the bath, if you will. That'll keep that side plate from popping out. Next up is the spool. We showed you how to grease the one side before. And we were explaining to get the grease into the uh, pinion gear. That's on. Now we can take our side plate, put that on. And when I put the side plate on, I like to get this out of gear. I like to get it into free spool. So pull that back in. That way you don't have any tension on the case. And we have our side plate screws. So this is a pretty substantial reel. And interestingly enough, when Penn founded Penn, the owner of uh, or the founder of Pen Reels actually had worked for Ocean City before and he was looking for an affordable alternative because the Ocean City Reels were pretty much uh, elitist if that's the right word. They were very expensive. The average guy couldn't afford them. So uh, the uh, fellow left, had a better idea and as it turns out over time, well, Penn won that battle. Penn was able to capitalize on the, uh, the mass market. But uh, he didn't take the, the uh, Ocean City designs with him. He pretty much created his own designs and they even do it as well as the Ocean City ones have. But interestingly enough, I guess over time, collectors have come to, to relish the pen reels and not the, uh, the Ocean City reels, although there certainly are a lot of nice Ocean City reels out there. Okay, well, we're tightening up that last one. Just a, a good place to recap. What we did was we took the whole reel apart. We did a good cleaning on this one. We noticed that the drag washer was frozen and inoperable. So we, uh, we showed you how to remove that drag washer. We uh, told you what uh, are acceptable substitutes. You can use uh, a pen drag washer. And if it's a little tight, go down a step in the, uh, the pen drag washers. But overall, they are good and they will work and uh, they'll certainly provide extra life and get the real fishing again. And uh, right now, we're just going to go ahead and put that star adjuster on. This one, if it rolls, there's actually a slot here. We can grab the slot with a screwdriver to hold that post while you can turn it. Be careful not to flare it out. Use the right size blade. And if uh, it gets stuck too much, go ahead and put the handle on it. And I uh, use the handle as the wrench while you, you go down. And we're going to take this handle screw that comes next. And all that's basically left is a little bit of a test here to make sure that we've got this operable. And that uh, the fellas uh, can get his dad's reel back and uh, can put it on display or take it fishing or both. 
it's a nice reel that will certainly land some nice size fish and it's uh, kind of ready to go again. There are no tie down screws on that so let's give it a turn. Turns nicely. We're in free spool at the moment. A little bit of a chirp there. That's one of the things unfortunately that happens with the aluminum spools. There you go. That's it. That's your Ocean City 988, a uh, mid-50s fishing reel. It's uh, ready to go fishing again. So I hope you've enjoyed that. And uh, if you did, please like the video and please stay tuned for more. Everybody, I want to take a moment to thank our first responders and essential personnel who's keeping us safe during the pandemic. And to all, please stay safe, stay well, and stay watching. This is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Have a great day.